Hey everybody, it's Todd and Aaron, and today is Thursday, which is our normal junction day, and and Gracie hey, apparently is right here as well. <laughs> uh, so we, uh, as as you know, Junction is taking a break, or it's actually just changing, actually, uh, for at least probably the next eight weeks. All of that's tentative, and so we wanted to get a quick video out to y'all to kind of let you know where we are, what's going on, and uh, to remind us that that God is one hundred percent in control. Listen, I, you need to know this. You need to know that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they're not up in heaven right now meeting in an emergency room. Like, what are we going to do? <laughs> they are fully in control. Why all this is happening, I don't know. But I do know that God can work even in these darkest times to bring about incredible glory to himself and a great movement of the church. And I think that there's, there's some really awesome opportunities that we're going to have during these next eight weeks. And uh, if we just look at our situations apart from Christ, if we just say, Christ, you're out of this. I'm just looking through my own lens. We're going to miss them. And so we want to be wise with how we walk through things. We want to, we want to, to give honor where honor is due, uh, but we also don't want to live in fear. We want to make sure we're looking at our future and our circumstances through a lens that includes Jesus Christ because uh, he's got game, you know, like he's there and he's, he's moving in great ways. And so uh, really we want to do two things with our video tonight. The, the first thing that we want to do is we want to walk you through basically four things of, of what is Junction going to kind of look like here in the near future. These aren't the, this isn't the exact plan that's going to be hammered out probably tomorrow and we'll have a video over the weekend to let you know exactly what to expect, but it'll include these, these elements to it. And then uh, we also want to try to hopefully give you some hope and some encouragement. So Anything else you want to say say before we get? Uh, yeah, we don't we don't like this. No. I, I don't like not being able to see you guys, the people that we love to do life and ministry with. We just don't like it, but it's the reality that we're in. So we wanted you to trust God and do what we what we can virtually with all of you that we love. Right. We we've actually spent a lot of time just saying how much we don't like what's going on, and so, uh, but we have to get we have to get out of that mindset to to move in. Then what can we do? Right. Um, otherwise, again, we're just looking at our circumstances through an eye side of really, we're just victims. And you know what? Here, here's the reality. We live in a broken world. We know we live in a broken world. We know there's brokenness in us. We know that we are designed to function with Christ at the center. We know that. And so we want to encourage uh, ourselves. Uh, we're tempted just to kind of go into a poor me attitude to say, hey, stop for a second. This is difficult. But how can God be at work in here? So here are some things that, again, a plan is coming out uh, a little bit later on, but it's going to include some of these things, and most of them we don't like. Well, at least the first one I don't like. <laughs> so the first thing is you need to know this. It, over the next eight weeks, uh, tentatively, if things change, they change. But right now the idea is that all official junction activities are going to be virtual. Uh, there's not going to be anything that we endorse that is um, a group setting of, of people coming together um, other than virtually. And there's one exception to this, one exception to this, but I don't like this one. Oh, this all. is a good exception. I mean, the exception is good, but I don't like this whole virtual oh. thing. It's just not. Yeah. So that means like Bible studies, we're, we're asking that you do that from a distance virtually. Uh, if we do small group tables uh, after a Thursday night junction, then we ask that you do that virtually. And I, the thing just went dark, so I'm going to move and come back. Don't worry. This is just keeping it real with you. There we are. Okay. We're back. <laughs> Look how great that was. That was awesome. All right. Which, so, side note, this morning I wanted to figure out Google Hangouts. So I was in the media room. He was in his office, and we Google hung out together. It was really cool. And then we called Trisha and made her join. So it wasn't too bad. Technology. Technology. There you go. All right. So there's an exception to this virtual uh, rule that we're using within the realm of Junction, and that's this. Um, there are going to be needs that come up both within our community, within Junction, because we have some people who are in that compromised area. We want to figure out how can we serve them better. Um, there's also people in our neighborhood and within our churches that need help. And so what we're asking for the exception is tomorrow's email is going to include a link to a, a form. Our kids are playing Fortnite right now, so if you hear yelling and screaming, it's just, I guess they lost. But there's going to be a link to a form that if you are willing and able uh, to be part of the people that we would move uh, used to move towards some of those needs in a very small group setting, like two to four people, maybe just one person running to get groceries with somebody. But if, if you're willing and able right now, that, that might mean the need comes up a week from now and you start feeling sick and say, I can't do it. That's totally fine. Just if you're willing to raise your hand and say, yes, I am here. Use me as you want. I just noticed this. 
Look, look how junction we are. I know. Junction, 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 junction. Woo! So when you realize you are junction, if you want junction. to be a part of helping the community around here, make sure you click on the link in tomorrow's email and that you go ahead and sign up. And then as needs arise, we'll reach out to you on that end. Is there anything there you want to well, add we, to? We know a lot of us have pretty clear calendars for the next few weeks because of all this. So we would love to see how we can serve others <coughs> with, with our free time. And I coughed into my elbow. I am 98% sure I just have allergies that are going on right now. Um, but I, I, Good I, thing I, we're virtual right now. Good no, thing we're we are not, virtual. but we are. There we go. There we go. All right. So the first thing, again, all junction activities will be virtual. The second one, though, there's one exception. That's for we really want to be organized and ready to go and meet some needs. We've already done that. We've already reached out to a few of you to, to meet some needs. We have another one coming up on Saturday. We've got a small group of people stepping in to help a neighbor here who's elderly and and it's just, it's just an awesome opportunity. I know that lady doesn't know Christ, and so it's a great opportunity for us to engage in a really unique way. Um, yeah, it's great. Okay, next thing. This is the tough one because there's also unofficial junction gatherings. You know who you are. You know, like, hey, I'm going to do whatever I want to do anyway. Now, <laughs> we have no control. We have zero control over what you do. You're adults. You can make your own choices, and so... We're not saying thou shall not, and if we find out you're in trouble, that's not what we're saying. But what we do want to encourage um, all of us to kind of keep in mind is, man, we want to make sure that whatever we're doing, we're doing out, out, of, a, out of a loving response in a way that actually is looking to glorify and honor, honor God. Um, it's interesting that Scripture actually does talk about one way to honor and glorify Him. Uh, in Romans 13.1 and, and 1 Peter chapter 2, we read about the fact that these governing authorities over us that we're supposed to honor. And if they're not asking us to do something that's totally unbiblical, we're supposed to, to honor that. And it's a way as we do that, we actually are honoring God, which we're designed to do. And imagine this. I mean, the ones the government they're writing about was highly persecuting the church. And so in this time when you're sitting there going, hey, I just want to move towards a small group setting can I do that? We're not going to say you can't. We want you to use wisdom. We want to make sure that you're, you're looking at the, the CDC rules, making sure hands are washed. If there's any uh, chance that you might be contagious of something, like you just say no. If you've been to a hot spot where you might have bumped into somebody, you say no. If you've been in contact with one of the four people, four cases right now um, of the virus here in Brazos Valley, you say no to that. We just want you to use wisdom in that. Now, I have to do one other break because, again, our camera went dim, but we're still recording. We know that. We just look weird. It is very sunny. Uh-oh. What happened? Oh, there we are. We're back. There we go. See, technology is, is not our friend right now. All right. So with that, though, I want to challenge you with this, okay? So some of us are sitting there going, I'm done with the Netflix. I'm done with the Hulu. I'm done, done with Disney+. Plus. I'm just, I've YouTubed everything I can. I'm bored. <laughs> And I need somebody to, to invest in me. I, I need that. And you know what? I think one of the beautiful things that can happen here is for us to be still and know that he is God. That we can get alone with God um, during these next eight, eight weeks. And we just have an opportunity for that to happen. I think I've read that somewhere. You, you probably have. Psalm 46.10. But here's the deal. If we're honest, there are many of us that we do not want to be still and be alone because we honestly, we don't like ourselves. Extroverts. Uh, extroverts, or we just don't like who we are. We know our brokenness, and we know when that happens, we don't like ourselves. And we're fearful that if we're stu stuck in that moment, that God might meet us and say, I don't like you either. <coughs> but here's, here's the beauty of the gospel. Can we stop and be still enough to actually hear him say, I love you? I'm thrilled by you. I mean, we miss these opportunities because we're so busy and we label things all over the place like, I have to go do this, I have to go do this, I have to go do this, and we just refuse to, to be still, to cease from striving and know that he is God. And when we do, when we connect with him in that way, it's amazing. We're, we're nervous that we might enter his presence and he's going to say, bad, bad, bad. But what if he's just coming and saying, I'm thrilled by you? You know, that how beautiful of a moment would that be for us? And so we want to encourage you to have... Have those moments of not running away, but really embracing of like just stopping and being still before the Lord and allowing him to engage with you in deep ways. He may in that moment too, he may start his little surgical cut. There might be areas he's like, man, I love you. I'm thrilled by you, but this is killing you. This area over here is just, it's hurting you. And so I need to apply pressure. So just encourage you for, for, to think about that 
And the other thing is before you go make those group plans, I just want to challenge you. We, we want to challenge you. What's your motivation? Are you gathering together for his glory or simply for your own needs to be met? Is it just, I'm lonely, ouchie, ouchie. you know, and I need somebody to fill in to fill me up. Therefore, I will move and I don't care what other people say. Or is it really this this need of like, you know what? I know that so-and-so is really struggling and God has really laid it in my heart and I'm okay. I know they're okay, but we need to move together. How different would our lives look if we just brought that attitude into everything? And I think that's also one of the beauties of the gospel is that no matter what we're doing, we have an attitude of what's my motivation. It's incredible what can happen. Like God just begins to transform when we see things like driving begin to bring him glory. With how we interact with people at work, gives him glory. When how we just, what we Netflix, gives him glory. It's really a beautiful, beautiful thing. So just want to encourage you in those unofficial gatherings. If you're going to do it, if you, you pray through it and like, yep, this is for his glory, not just for my own comfort. And I'm going to make that move towards it. That uh, you follow the CDC guidelines and um, just use wisdom and love there. Got a cough. <coughs> Can't take a drink. And what else do I have to do? Fix the screen! Oh, yes. Yeah! Fix the screen! Come on, wake it up. Is it still going? It's still going. Come on. Now we can see. Yeah, there we go. Look, we're doing good. All right, fourth thing. Massively important here. You need to understand during the, and it's not just during this time, but we're going to feel it more all the time, that you are junction. You know, like, like we're the body of Christ, and, and you have a role to play in that. And so I just want to encourage all of us. You may be an introvert and say, man, I wish somebody would call me. And I want to encourage you, reach out and call somebody. How are you doing? They might be more introverted than you. Some of you are thinking, I've been doing this social distancing, distancing thing for years. Yeah. And it works quite well for me. Like, I'm loving this right now. It's, it's, it's true. Uh -huh. But this is a time when we have a lot of people who are, who are isolated. They're feeling alone and uh, would love to either have a phone call as opposed to a text. If you're like, I don't know their number, man, slack them and say, hey, I just want to see how things are going. And could, could we talk? Could, what, here's my number. Or can I get your number? Um, think of ways like that that you can just be intentional with other people with injunction. Uh, and not just with injunction. You might have coworkers who you know are just really struggling during this time. This is a way that we can be welcoming. Like, reach out and, man, I know we see each other at work or we used to see each other at work. How are you doing? I just wanted to make sure, I mean, are you living in fear right now? I just wanted to touch base and just so you hear another human's voice. So you are Junction, and so we're asking you all, be intentional. I would love it if we all had, the, if it all made it our ambition to make just one phone call, just one phone call each day to reach out to somebody and say, I'm just thinking about you, wanted to see how you're doing. Is there anything I can do to help? Any way I can be praying for you? Let me just share with you what God's been doing in my life, whatever that may be. Because <laughs> we know you're not talking about sports because those are all canceled. We know you're not you know, talking about the latest movie that you've seen because the theaters are shut down. So, I mean, you're going to have to be intentional in this, and it might be way outside your comfort zone, but that's o it's okay. I think especially in this time of disappointments, many of us are dealing with disappointments of things being canceled and stuff that we were looking forward to that's not going to happen or a variety of disappointments. And it's, it's hard to deal with disappointment in a way that honors the Lord. It's okay to grieve some of that, but then yeah. to go, I'm going to trust the Lord even though I don't really understand what's going on or how long this is going to last. So, yes, we need to reach out to each other and be reminded of God's faithfulness and his goodness and that we're still there for each other, even if it's just with a phone call. Absolutely, absolutely. I've got to make the thing move again. Man, I should have turned it off. You're right. <laughs> I didn't do a very good job. Come on, wake it up. Wake it up and wake up. Nope. nope. And wake up. Nope. <laughs> oh, it'll work. Snapping always works. Or it doesn't. Let's see here. Come on. Oh, there it is. Look, snapping work. You brought it right back. All right. So all official junction activities are going to be virtual. There's an exception except for that tangible need. We'll be looking for that list tomorrow. And if you want to sign up, we'd love to, to just see junction. We've got to work through junction to love on people. Um, remember, unofficial gatherings follow CDC uh, rules. Uh, but also just ask yourself, man, what's the motivation? Is this for God's glory and for his honor or just for my convenience? And I want it. I want it now. And life's all about me. I don't like that one little push there very, very hard. And then remember that you <laughs> are you. Junction. Like We are asking you to be what you already are. Step outside your comfort zones. If you read the, the, the message like two or three before uh, in, in the Slack where this video is going to be posted, if you read that, 
Remember the early church? They were all outside their comfort zones. They were all chased away. They were all confused. They were all like, this is not how it's supposed to go. And yet, because of their faithfulness to declare God's message and God, declare God's glory outside their comfort zones, the reality is that's what our faith rests on. Because they were faithful, that's why we heard the gospel message. And that's incredible to think about. We have the opportunity to be that for other people. So you are Junction. And listen, this plan is not forever. This is, this is not like forever what Junction is going to look like. <laughs> Uh, we hope this ends sooner than later, but at, right now, that's what things are going to look like. And, and if you're sitting there just going, Man, I'm just feeling distressed, I'm feeling overwhelmed, I don't understand why God would do this, you know, the Bible gets gets you, God gets you. As a matter of fact, in Psalm 77, I'm going to, I bookmarked it here so I wouldn't have to look around too long. There it is, Psalm 77. <coughs> Excuse me. The psalmist goes through this very thing. He sits there and he starts off, he says, I will cry out to God and call for help. I will cry out to God and, and he will pay attention to me. He has to pay attention to me. In my time of trouble, I, I sought the Lord. And so he's going, I've got troubled times. I'm going to cry out to him. He has to hear me. And then it's really interesting. As he goes on, he says, I'm going to remember God when I groan. I will think about him when my strength leaves. And he keeps going on like, this is just bad time, bad time. And, then, and he says this, he goes, I tried to make sense of what was happening. Like he just doesn't understand, and he's confused, and he's perplexed about what's going on, and he just begins to question God, actually. He starts asking questions like this. Will the Lord reject me forever? Will he never again show me his favor? And has his loyal love disappeared forever? Has his promises, have they failed forever? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has his anger stifled his compassion? And then I said, I am sickened by the thought that the sovereign one might become inactive. So this guy is sitting there going, my situation is hard. I don't know what to do. I don't know what's going on. Uh, and I don't like it. I'm confused. There's, there's danger coming towards him. That's where he is, where a lot of us might be right now. And then he does the most beautiful thing. He says, I, I am choosing not to live off of feeling I'm choosing to dwell on the things of God and so he goes on and he says I will I choose to remember the works of the Lord yes I will remember the amazing things he has done long ago I'm going to think about that I am going to reflect on your deeds oh God your deeds are extraordinary what God what other thing could ever compare to our great God nothing and then he begins to list these things out so I've got a challenge for you. We're going to open up a, um, a new channel. I want you to join it on the Slack. It's going to be called uh, One Thing, One Thing. And what I want you to do on that one thing, I want you to think about God's Word. I want you to think about the story of Scripture. <clears throat> I want you to think about the magnitude of what God has done. And I want you to think of just one thing, one event from Scripture that makes you go, wow, that brings me great encouragement. Now, here's the deal. On that one thing, you're, you're going to write it on the thread, but there's no repeats allowed. So if you're like, man, I'm really thinking of the parting of the Red Sea, but it's already there, you can't do it. You can like it. Go to another one. If you don't have another one, you just liked it, and that's totally fine. If you're sitting there going, I don't know anything about God's, God's word. I don't know anything about how he's worked in the past. That channels for you because you're going to start getting scripture reference after scripture reference after scripture reference of who this great God is, what he's done. So, um, Aaron, do you have one that you've thought about? I do. Todd. I do have one. Yes, Todd. I do. <laughs> it's from Mark chapter 5, verses 21 and following. And it's when a man stops Jesus and <coughs> asks him to heal his daughter, his mm. Jairus' daughter, um, which is awesome because he does that. But what, what got me there, this is, you might be familiar with this story. He's walking with a crowd of people to go heal Jairus' daughter, and he's stopped by a woman who has been bleeding for 12 years, has gone to doctor mm. after doctor, and nobody's been able to help her, and she thinks, if I can just touch his cloak, mm. his power will heal me. And she does, and he realizes, and he stops and says, who touched me? And she was healed. Her bleeding stopped immediately. How amazing and powerful is that, that her faith did, did that, that he healed her, he didn't have to go and you know, put, even put his hand on her and say, be healed, that his power healed her. God's power is huge and amazing, and he is over everything that's going on in our world right now. I just love that story. And, and amazing, right? When, when he, he, she touches and 
And he's like, who touched me, right? Mm-hmm. Like, that's his response to the disciples. They're like, uh, we have no idea what you're talking about. But he knew. Like, they were, they were confused. Everywhere. They were confused and perplexed. It made no sense to them what was going on. And yet Jesus, in that moment, he goes, I know. And he turns around and he looks at her. He has a moment with her. I mean, just what a beautiful thing. That's a great scripture for, for that one thing in this time if we really struggle with that. Where is that found? Mark 5, 21 and following. So I hope you can get there and post that quickly. Mine that I chose, I wanted to choose something a little bit obscure. Just because that's how I roll sometimes. Didn't want to take any any easy ones from you guys. But there's this prophet. This, his name is Elisha. Um, and he's he's living during the time of the kings, right? Kings and Chronicles, where we're talking about in the royalty series. And God is doing all sorts of crazy things through him. Like he's making poisonous stews. People made poisonous stews. They're like, ah, oh, there's death is in the pot. And he makes it better. And then there's he heals a leper and... Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. He single-handedly uh, captures an army, and it, it, it's crazy what he does there. So, but I'm not going. Those aren't the things I'm talking about. The thing that is so cool is that these prophets they say our place is too small. We need to expand a little bit. And he's like, that sounds good. You can, you can go do this. This is found in Second Kings chapter six, verses one through seven. And it's a it's a weird story that really people don't know exactly why it's there. But so they go and they're cutting down trees. Watch out! And one of the prophets. He loses grip, and the axe head that he's using, that he's borrowed, falls into the river, and it sinks. And it's awesome because at that moment, he doesn't go, I'll dive in and get it. He's like, oh, no, I need help. Instantly, he calls out for help. And Elisha's like, show me where. And he he points to where it is. And Elisha uh, throws a stick in. As soon as he throws a stick, it's just kind of weird. The axe head, the iron axe head, floats up to the top, and they're able to recover it. And you're like, why in the world would you tell us that? Because, listen. (laughs) That seemed like such an insignificant event to the rest of the things that were going on in the world at that time. Mm -hmm. It seemed like, you know, it's just an axe head. It's no big deal. And yet it mattered to God. And he was willing to move towards that and to engage with that small thing. So no matter how big your needs are, no matter how small your needs are, we have a God who can do big things, even what seems like are just small situations. So we want to encourage you. That's, again, that's 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. Mm -hmm. I'll post that. Remember, add the channel, one thing, and get there, read, and post. If you like things, feel free to like them. But this is a way where we can mutually encourage one another so we can begin to see in this time, as opposed to looking through our own lens, we can say, no, no, not our lens. We need to consider Jesus in the middle of this. How big is he? We need to consider that. This way we're helping each other to remember we're looking at our present situations and our future with God in the middle of this. So we're so thankful for you all. Sorry we went on so long. And and whatever is that happened here, but we are thankful and honored to serve alongside of you. We know this is uncharted territory, and you know what? It's going to be okay. God's going to work in incredible ways. So thank you all for, for taking the time here. Anything else you want to say? Yeah. <laughs> I guess just it's, it's so easy for us to take this as, wow, I get this amazing break from work, from school, from whatever might be going on, but we really want, and we're speaking to ourselves too, to just ask the Lord, what would you have me do in this time? How can I use this time for your glory and and to continue to reach out to others and to be the initiator? We've talked many times at Junction about how we all need to be initiators with others, especially people that that may um, may be really dealing with a lot of disappointment, which is probably all of us, or just really may need a friend to reach out. And don't don't stop with people that you know really well. I think it's it's great to just maybe get out of your comfort zone and. Hey, that person mm-hmm. at my table, I have, maybe I hadn't seen him a little, you know, for the last few weeks before we had to stop Junction, but I wonder how they're doing and just how much a phone call, a text message can, can mean to somebody when we're already <coughs> all feeling very isolated, especially if you live by yourself. <laughs> you probably need people to, to talk to. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we are hands and feet of Christ, right? Like that's, that's why we're here, not just to be consumers, really, right? We're, we're here to be stewards of what he's given us. He's given us his time. Uh, to do great things. So uh, actually, let, let's pray, and then we will uh, say goodbye. So um, yeah, well, we can do that because we're here virtually. You could reach out and join hands um, virtually. Come on. No, okay. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for uh, the ministry of Junction. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for the fact that uh, no matter where people are right now, that you are aware of their circumstances and their situations. We thank you, Lord, that none of us is alone. We may feel alone, but that's just not true. I pray, Father, that we'd all have the courage to cease from striving and know that you're God, that we would hear hear you say, man, child, I love you. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. Father, I pray we would have that you cast out all that fear that we have of being just still and alone and would learn 
the joy and the beauty in drawing near to you. So, Father, we love you. We thank you. We ask that you would work in unexpected and amazing ways during this downtime. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So Amen. thankful for y'all. We will be touching virtually with you guys soon. <laughs>